Um, thank you everybody for joining me today um, for Procurement Australia's uh, industry briefing supporting the uh, library collections, furniture, equipment and associated requirements. Request for tender that we'll be putting out into the market very soon. Um, firstly, I'd just like to, to point out that um, all things being equal, um, I would like to have uh, not done the presentation today um, considering it was Remembrance Day. Um, however, um, as uh, I was uh, notified of that um, error, a little bit too late to change the date, uh, we will be pausing at 11 a.m. Uh, for one minute's um, silence in, uh, uh, in recognition of Remembrance Day. Uh, we'll just um, place everybody's microphones on mute just for that minute and then we'll continue on with the process. Um, if we can remind all the, the audience members, which I, I think everybody has, but if we rem remind everybody just to uh, mute your microphones, um, and that uh, any questions that you may have, if you can hold them um, till the end of the process, there'll be plenty of time uh, at the end of the process for questions um, uh, on the process. So we have a pretty, um, a pretty large presentation today, um, some 40 odd slides. So I'm gonna be moving through the slides pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to give you an overview today of the services that we're seeking um, to put out into the marketplace. We'll give you some information on Procurement Australia and the contract um, process that we will seek uh, for suppliers to uh, be a party to for this um, process. So um, we'll kick the process off now. So again, thank you everybody for, for joining us today. Um, the agenda for today's uh, presentation will be, we'll do an overview of Procurement Australia, uh, an overview of the contract process, the scope of the tender, um, how the tender is structured, uh, what we will be uh, conducting as the tender process um, and how to work, how uh, our suppliers will work under that contract. Um, any sort of little tender hints at the end and then we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. As I mentioned, uh, we will be pausing at 11 a.m. Uh, for one minute silence uh, for Remembrance Day. Um, I will uh, I'll make sure that happens at 11 a.m. So why are we here today? Um, we're here today to provide an overview, like we said, of the contract summary, um, the tender, and we're going to ask for um, the industry's feedback on the tender process that we're gonna put out into the marketplace with um, specific reference to the, the specifications that we're putting out into the marketplace. Um, one of the real benefits of this um, industry engagement and the time and effort you, that you're putting into attending today um, is that we're hoping to get feedback on the specification document and the RFT document so that when we put it out into the market, um, it makes sense um, for industry um, and that it's fit for purpose. What are we looking at, uh, looking for from you as industry, as the suppliers? Um, we would love to get um, feedback on our current specification document, um, any new components to be included. Um, we wanna make sure that the document makes sense to industry and will allow you both to put your best foot forward qualitatively, um, but also um, price-wise as well, where, where required. The tender participation, um, we're looking for a good quality tender from all of our, our suppliers. Um, we have um, a membership that is uh, very, very interested in this tender. Um, the level of detail that'll be required in this tender uh, will be high, and we're really looking for detailed and quality submissions uh, in this, in, and all of our tenders for that matter, um, but it, specifically with this one as well. Uh, in case you don't participate, um, if you've attended today's meeting, and in case you won't be participating, we'd really like to know um, why uh, that is the case. It's going to help us for, for future processes as well. Um, and then to keep in mind, more specific details will be provided uh, on what work is required uh, when we're engaging your services if you um, form part of the contract process. Um, so you may need to provide quotes to members under this deed, um, that the procurement process that we're um, we are asking you to be a part of um, is to establish the contract and establish a panel of service providers. Um, you may need to provide quotes to members if they engage uh, you to provide any of the services under the contract that we'll sign. So Procurement Australia's overview is that we have Procurement Australia, we have three brands, Procurement Australia, Church Resources, um, and one of our newest brand, uh, which is Space Station. A brief history of, of Procurement Australia, some key dates, 2005, um, 
the MAPS, the Municipal Authority Purchasing Scheme, um, was the trade. The trading name was changed to Procurement Australia in 2005. In 2017, um, there was the Catholic Church um, Specialist Aggregator. Church resources was acquired by by PA, um, and then Space Station was established to offer a co-working and flexible office space uh, environment for people as well as part of the process. So, um, it's a uh, it's a great history um, for Procurement Australia with our, across our three brands um, and especially our new um, Space Station brand as well. The services, what do we offer from Procurement Australia? Um, publicly tendered standing offer contracts. So they're state um, and local government compliant contracts to our members, um, bespoke client contracts, advising, consulting, benchmarking, spend analysis, uh, and the remaining bullet points there. Um, we also have a procure right, an element of our of Procurement Australia is our procure, procure right brand. Um, that's part of the uh, bespoke client contract piece. Procurement Australia's um, sourcing process is quality assured. We're very proud that um, it says that it complies with um, ISO 9001 2015 standard um, and has achieved an excellent standard within the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. Uh, that SIPs um, and is uh, audited annually by ISO accreditors um, to uh, to maintain that ISO standard. So we're very proud um, that the procurement processes that we run meet those standards. What are the benefits to our members? Um, time and resource savings. There's no need for those guys to run art repetitive RFTs. Uh, we manage that on their behalf. Um, we offer a broad um, product range and offering. Flexible contract arrangements, they can opt in at any time during the contract term um, and compliant processes conducted by Procurement Australia to that local and state government levels. Now, what are the benefits to our suppliers? Um, again, it's a reduced number of RFTs for you guys. Um, it, industry will, uh, once you're a member of the, the panel for Procurement Australia, um, that process uh, will last for a period of time. There may be some amounts of uh, procurement processes or RFQs or RFTs um, that members put out to you, um, but there will be a, a significant uh, reduced number amount of RFTs when you're dealing with Procurement Australia members. Um, you get access to Procurement Australia's uh, membership base, um, which is uh, well over a thousand members at the moment, um, and our sales team. They're constantly expanding our member base, um, looking for new members uh, that you then get access to across Australia. Um, so that sales team also promotes our, our contracts to existing members. Um, so when they're they're contacting a membership base, say existing members, um, and we've signed a new contract, um, that's our sales team are offering those new contracts to our um, existing member bases and of course our new, uh, our new uh, members as well. So an overview of the contract, um, the name of it is Library Collections Furniture, Equipment and Associated Requirements. Some key uh, whoops, sorry. Some key uh, information there is the initial term of the contract uh, will be two years. Uh, we'll be offering two one-year options to extend after that initial term. We're looking for a start date in 1 July 2021 um, and the expiry date of that initial term will then be 30 June 2023. We have currently 15 service provision categories uh, within the specification document. Uh, Part of the uh, engagement process with industry uh, now is to make sure that those service provision categories are fit for purpose uh, and that we're not missing anything from a supplier point of view. The contract type that we'll be putting out will be an open panel standing off a contract. Uh, and the service provision locations for this contract is national, Australia wide. Members that have pre-committed, uh, that means members that have given us written uh, authority that if um, the process is uh, conducted to standards uh, and meets their requirements. They are pre-committed to use the contract is now at, is currently at 42 members. The draft specification document. So the draft specification document that I've been, I've been putting together is still under review. Um, it's under review because we're looking for um, feedback from um, industries and suppliers on the document to finalize that process. We can give you a copy um, and it's, a, it's available at, um, at the email address that you state there. Um, I can send a copy of this presentation through to everybody after the presentation, so you won't have to worry about writing the, uh, madly writing the uh, email address down right now. 
So the close dates, which is really important, we're running to a, a very tight timeline le line leading up to Christmas. Um, if we get that specification through to you, we would very much appreciate your comments or suggestions back by the 20th of November. The objectives of the tender, um, again, it's the, it first and foremost is deliver a compliant tender consistent with the provisions of ISO 9001. Um, we want to obtain an outcome that offers PA members a panel of experienced contractors um, capable of providing the service provision categories. Um, and we want to provide a centrally managed standing offer contract, but that allows for members to conduct RFQ, RFQ activities um, with any supplier um, to meet their specific requirements under the standing offer contract. To create that specification document, Procurement Australia engaged a tender reference group. Um, that is a, a group of subject matter, industry subject matter experts within its membership um, to, to make sure that the wider library services, the national library services requirements were covered in the specification document. Um, we had the specialized involvement of those subject matter experts to make sure that happens. Um, and we've, we were looking to establish a, co a category composition um, that is welcomed by the library services supplier community. And we're hoping that it's going to attract and impanel a contemporary relevant supplier cohort for the next four years um, to meet service member requirements. Um, the, the work that I, uh, that I did with the TRG was really vital in making sure that the current specification document that we had at the time is still fit for purpose and where it wasn't that any new categories of service were included and that the existing service categories were updated. Um, I'll give you a bit more detail about that a bit further down in the presentation, but there are a couple of new service, service provision categories um, that were included as a part of this tender reference group. This year, Procurement Australia is actually really looking um, to attract feedback from uh, higher education suppliers as well. So our sales team has mentioned that uh, we have a number of, uh, or we will be targeting a number of higher education um, facilities um, as part of our sales process. So this year we're really looking to, um, to hear back from suppliers in that higher education sector, universities and, and technical colleges and the like and for, for private institutions. So um, we're targeting those as an additional target audience to our standard um, list of suppliers for potentially local or municipality um, type libraries. The tender scope currently looks like this. Um, these are the headings uh, that we have in the, in the scope as we speak. What's new? Um, from the original specification document, the TRG's provided us with um, four new headings, digital collections, forecasting, large printed materials. Um, that's not a new one, it's a, it's a change, and library removalists. So um, one, two, and four on that list are new. Um, items and large printed materials. The specifications in the original document that we had uh, have been folded into category one um, with our new, within our new specification. So you can see that the, the feedback that we received from the subject matter experts on that tender reference group um, have really helped us to improve um, the specification document um, and, uh, and make sure that it's currently fit for purpose. So this is a, uh, this is a slide that I have put together um, showing a list of all of the uh, service provision categories that we currently have and a brief description about that service provision category. Um, they were in this uh, presentation until a couple of days ago. I was going to run through all of them, but it was going to be nearly 60 pages long uh, and take a good period of time. So what I want to do is today I want to concentrate on these um, seven slides. Um, they cover a couple of the uh, additional um, new categories of service and a couple of the, the original ones um, that I'm sure the majority of you will know already. Um, so I'll, I'll flick through these. The other slides that I've shown here and that are grayed out here um, are available at the end of this submission, uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, you can look at those in your own time. So printed materials in English, it's very simple. Uh, again, nonfiction, comic books, graphic novels, pictures, novels, and textbooks and the like. Um, this is a very standard, um, I'm, I'm informed, a very standard uh, service provision category. Um, that hasn't changed. You will still find within the specification of this document, um, we're hopeful and the feedback from the, S, from the tender reference group is that a lot of the specification um, is 
is still very much fit for purpose um, and will be uh, should be understood by the supplier base. But again, it's information that we uh, we would very much appreciate back from you. Uh, that if something as simple as printed material in English doesn't quite make sense, then it'll be great to be able to update that from a supplier's point of view. Uh, and then again, printed material in a language other than English um, is very much the same as the uh, as that first category there. But however, there's other languages um, other than English. Um, we're looking for, we've done a refresh on the uh, the list of languages that we will, uh, that members sh should be seeking and it's currently sitting at about 57 languages um, which are available um, in the specification document um, when that's issued. Shelf ready cataloging and processing services. Um, this was one of the new ones uh, that the, the TRG um, put a lot of detail and a lot of effort into. Um, descriptions of the following service options are outlined in the RFT. So full shelf ready services, unbundling services, and, and then unbundling and processing services. Um, so there's a lot of detail across those four bullet points uh, that you see within the specification document. Um, this is one of the, the service provision categories, like I said, that is new and that our membership base and that the, um, the TRG mentioned to me, uh, that they're very much looking forward to uh, a good amount of detail on uh, because it's a uh, it's an important category of service moving forward. Associated support services. I put this one in because it's a bit of a catch-all. Um, it's category nine within the specification and it's a bit of a catch-all um, category of service. It's things like open day collections, toy library collections, brokering services, and storage and relocation services. Now, you could have potentially put those bullet points in their own headings, um, but we've we've made this an associated type support service. Um, there's not a there is a, a small um, requirement across libraries. I'm informed for toy libraries and the like, and brokering services and things like storage, um, relocation services. But membership would like to get an understanding of the industry's capability in this area to provide those um, type services. So we've put this in a bit of a catch-all category. Um, you'll note at the bottom of the, the slide there that this category will not require uh, respondents, that will be um, industry and you guys are the suppliers, to submit financial details as part of the, um, this category within their tender submission. Uh, we're only seeking in this particular case to understand capability and capacity and experience in uh, in providing these uh, these type of services. Library management systems. Again, this is an interesting one from uh, that I'm informed from the TRG. Um, selected panel of suppliers, installation, commissioning, um, and the ongoing maintenance of library management systems. Um, again, this one does not require pricing to be provided, as uh, as I'm informed that there is a number of different library management systems out there and to be able to price one up would be uh, very difficult without understanding the, uh, uh, the facility's full requirements. Uh, but this is the number one where we're hoping that industry will take uh, a good amount of time and provide a, a good amount of detail on um, so that members can make um, the beginnings of an informed decision if they're going to go down the, the path of, uh, of changing or implementing a library management system. Program support and non-traditional library collections. This is a new um, process, or sorry, I shouldn't say new. This is an updated, significantly updated um, category of service. Um, so things like equipment to support early learning literacy programs, um, puppets and musical shakers and the like, um, equipment to support specialising programs like elderly um, storytelling kits for elderly residents, um, sensitive, sensitive story time sessions and STEAM equipment, um, and the likes of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, story time at home kits, um, toys and games and the like. This one is, uh, it's a, it's a, an updated, um, it's all but new basically because the, the whole, the whole um, service provision category has been um, changed significantly um, with a lot of new information in there. So again, this is something that um, uh, our uh, membership will be really interested to find out um, the, the market's availability to be able to provide this. And then library removal of services. This is another one uh, that's been added to the process from new. Um, we're looking to understand um, internal and external um, library removal of specialists um, with it for, uh, for the library industry, of course. This one is another one of the categories where we're not seeking for you to provide pricing uh, for these services. Um, it's very much a, uh, a price and application process we understand. Um, so this one, again, very much um, interested in understanding capability and capacity and experience in providing this particular type of service. 
So moving on now from um, the different types of service provision category, like I said, at the end of this presentation, the remainder of those service provision categories up to 15 are available for you to have a look through um, at the end of the presentation. Um, so I wanted to bring to everybody's attention, the last time this, uh, uh, this tender was run, there were, when we asked for um, pricing as part of the process within our um, schedule of rates, the base list price used to be, um, and the screenshot there, we used to specify what the, any discount was um, in uh, currency. So we were accepting, accepting Australian recommended retail price, US recommended retail price and UK recommended retail price. Um, that resulted in us then having to do a lot of currency conversion uh, at our end. So this year, what we're looking for from all of our suppliers is all baseless pricing and any applicable discounts should be provided in Australian dollars. Um, it's how our members operate, it's how Procurement Australia operates, and I think it's gonna um, take a, a significant amount of time off this process if the pricing is provided, XGST, um, but in Australian recommended retail price for all of them. So the evaluation and award process, uh, when submissions are received, um, they uh, it gets, applied, uh, sorry, a set of evaluation criteria uh, and sub-criteria are applied to the responses um, to evaluate and score the responses from, um, from the suppliers. Um, suppliers can tender for any one category of service, any of the, one of the 15, or any combination of the categories, or all of them, if you wish. Um, and the evaluation and the, any awarding of, uh, of contracts to suppliers will be done on a, a per category basis. So the tender structure. So the tender structure that we'll be putting out has uh, part A to part F. A is information for the tenders, tenderers that will um, give you an understanding of, uh, of the contract, the wider contract. The conditions for tendering is at part B. Part C is the deed of standing offer. Um, that's the document that will be executed between Procurement Australia and the tenderer. Part D is the sub agreement, the general terms and conditions of the sub agreement. That's an agreement that will, um, that will be on foot when a member engages a supplier to provide services for them. The terms and conditions within part D then govern those um, services being provided to the member. Part E is the list of specifications and part F is our returnable schedules, including any pricing schedules that we call for as part of this process. Um, these parts form the entire RFT suite um, and they're available by, via the tender link download, um, which will be available um, on the date that escapes my brain just at the moment. The returnable schedules, so the returnable schedules at part F um, get broken down into 16 um, schedules. It's tendered, the tender declaration um, is one that I wanna point out just now, along with schedule five and schedule 16. Um, the tender's declaration is very important. So are the non-conformances to T's and C's at Schedule 5 and Schedule 16. So I wanted to move on to just this, this particular slide and a couple more. Schedule 1 is the tender's declaration. That's where we ask you to provide um, business and contact information. But importantly, we ask you to um, sign a, a non-collusive uh, tendering um, declaration as part of that process. One of the things that can slow a process down when um, the suppliers send through a submission is that these schedules one, five and 16 specifically either aren't completed, completed or aren't completed correctly. So when you're looking at the, uh, if you download the tender documentation, you're looking at the, doc, at the um, schedules, if you can give particular attention to schedule one um, and then schedule five in this particular case, is any non-compliance to the terms and conditions and specifications in the document. So when you're reading part C, part D, um, and anything to do with part E um, as well, if you're reading those documents and there is terms and or conditions within the, uh, those sections that your business cannot agree to, um, it's very important that within schedule five, um, you put the words um, either no non-compliances or no departures if you're okay with it, but if there are non-compliances to the standard terms and conditions within that um, section. You need to list those terms and, uh, those terms and conditions um, and give us an understanding of how we can, uh, a, a version of that clause that you can agree with. 
Um, if you send through that there are um, non-conformances, I'll obviously get in touch with you and we can discuss those um, on a case-by-case -case basis. But it's very important um, to have that Schedule 5 completed as well. So Schedule 6 um, is actually the Collusive Tenditry Statutory Declaration. This is a legal document that we ask you to sign um, that uh, says, excuse me whilst I have a cough. That always happens. Um, the Collusive Tendering Statutory Declaration is what we ask um, you to, to, uh, to sign, um, stating that there's been no official collusive um, tender, uh, tendering um, going on as part of this process. So those three documents are very important. I just wanted to, uh, to, raise, to bring them to your attention today. Okay, so the tender process, um, the procurement specialist is me, um, Grant Hill. I'm part of the uh, strategic um, procurement team at Procurement Australia. My role during this process is going to be to manage the tender event, to call and close the tender, summarise and evaluate the tender submissions and develop a contract award recommendation um, through the management of EDPA um, and then through uh, to our membership base. The tender contract responsibility process, again, I wanted to call to the attention of, uh, of suppliers attending today. Um, you'll notice that call and receive tenders, evaluate tender, contract award decision um, sits with Procurement Australia. When you've submitted your tender, um, we still need access to you as a supplier, uh, partly to follow up on any, uh, any issues that I have with, the, with your tender submissions, such as what we just spoke about in those particular schedules. Um, but if we are to offer you a contract and then go to execute that contract, um, we really need your help during that execute contract piece. So um, if you can make yourself available, not just after you've put your submission in, if you can make yourself available during that execution of contract phase, um, it makes life uh, a lot easier and a lot quicker for the process as well. The next one I wanted to bring to your attention is the commercial relationship. So the commercial relationship, once we've established, Procurement Australia has established the deed with your company, um, the commercial relationship lies with um, the participating member and you, the supplier. So if the participating member wants to engage your, or engage services um, under this contract, they can go out to market for an RFQ um, and make a decision on the supplier to provide the services. That RFQ might um, involve uh, pricing, and if it does, the relationship there is between the participating member and the supplier. Again, the sales rebought, uh, rebate um, payments and reporting process. Um, that's a monthly report that we'll seek you um, to provide to Procurement Australia um, to understand the work that's been conducted in that month um, so that we can calculate um, the rebate amount, the rebate payment amount to be required. That also lies with the, with the suppliers. So the timetable for this process, um, industry briefings are happening today. Um, the industry f um, feedback closing date, it's very important. I appreciate that we're, we're uh, getting very close towards the end of the year. Um, so if I can get any feedback that industry might have by that 20th date, I can uh, make sure that the, uh, the document is updated and released on the 25th. Um, the tender is gonna close on the 18th of December. Again, we appreciate that is very close towards the end of the year. Um, we've, uh, we've given that period of time because we don't believe that there is anything within the specification that is, um, that is too new or that will require um, any sort of new um, service provision structure from industry or new pricing rates or anything along that, along those lines. Um, it's very much the same as what you're, uh, you've seen in the past, but with a few um, new categories which should be easily understood and a few current categories that have been updated. Um, so the tender is closing on the 18th of December. Uh, we'll be evaluating the tender in the new year. We've put TBA there just at the moment because we're not quite sure how or when that's going to happen at the moment. Um, and the agreement's going to begin on 1 July 2021. So to tender, to download the tender and any sort of clarifications, um, the tender documents can only be obtained via tender link. Um, to obtain those documents, you'll need to down, you'll need to register uh, with Tenderlink. Once you've registered with those guys, you'll be able to download. You'll get a notification that the tender is live, and you'll be able to download the documents from there. Um, any documentation obtained from any other source uh, will make your tender ineligible. So, the documentation in full will be placed on Tenderlink, um, and you must obtain the documentation from there. 
Uh, and like it says on that third bullet point, please follow the instructions of the RFT advertisement uh, for tender registration if it's required. Uh, any clarifications? Um, if I put out tender documentation that doesn't make sense or a page reference or something along those lines um, is incorrect, um, all questions uh, in relation to this tender must be submitted via the tender link online form. Um, it's very important that um, we don't start emailing um, whilst you, you will, uh, you're able to contact me, anything, any formal questions with regards to the tender link or the tender process, um, it, it must go via the tender link um, process so that there's a record. Clarifications. Um, yeah, if any addenda are to be issued as part of the um, process, they will be issued via Tenderlink also. So Tenderlink is your source of truth um, for any of the documentation. Um, we uh, we do not recommend or we, we state that any information that you obtain from anybody else um, may make your tender um, ineligible. So the last date for questions um, for this tender, and it will be stated in the tender documentation as well, is 11 December. So the tender responses, um, the tender is must submit uh, as part of your um, submission, all returnable schedules completed and signed where required. Um, any relevant marketing um, collateral or materials that will help us with the submission, um, any other information deemed necessary by, um, the, um, by the supplier uh, and submissions must be uploaded into Tenderlink portal um, prior to the closing date and time um, in Microsoft Word and Microsoft L, uh, Excel, um, any Adobe um, PDF for general information as well. Submissions lodged by hard copy or email or any alternative electronic means other than what's mentioned above will not be considered as part of the process. The Procurement Australia income model. So pursuant to the contract um, uh, with a supplier, the contract will be required to pay Procurement Australia a rebate in accordance with this deed. The rebate percentage for this contract will be confirmed in the tender documents and tenders are required to incorporate that rebate into their financial responses. That's an important point. Um, the rebate percentages may differ from category to category. Uh, again, that will be stated within the tender documentation. How to work under this contract. So members can generally be, <coughs> excuse me, separated into two groups. We have pre-committed members, the members who have pre-committed to the contract prior to, its, to the tender. Um, so they don't need to opt in to use any contract that's established as part of this process. Um, and then we have an opt-in process. Um, once the, the contract is awarded and the, um, the, we have the list of suppliers, uh, members who did not pre-commit, um, they can issue an opt-in letter to the successful supplier and a copy to Procurement Australia. Um, so they issue that opt-in letter, they, they ring your company and say, we'd like to use your services under the Procurement Australia banner. Um, they engage, they formally advise you of that. They send that copy to us as well. Um, and then the, uh, your pricing can be offered to that members and they can take advantage of that process. The engagement in the and invoicing process. So a small swimming lane um, diagram here, uh, just as an example, um, Procurement Australia signs uh, the contract with a supplier. Um, the member issues an opt-in letter and raises a purchase order. So that opt-in letter goes through to the supplier. Um, one of our members would like to use um, your company under this Procurement Australia contract. So they'll send you a letter authorizing that. They'll also send it to us um, and they raise a purchase order for those services through to you, the supplier. You deliver the service to the member under that Procurement Australia contract. Um, the supplier invoices the member and the member pays the supplier. So that's where you, um, that's how that standard process works there. The additional pieces are um, each month, the supplier reports the sales for that month through to PA under the Procurement Australia contract. Um, PA invoices the supplier for, excuse me one second. PA in, um, invoices the supplier um, for the Procurement Australia rebate amount and then the supplier pays Procurement Australia that amount. So pretty standard in that first um, half uh, of the process there, apart from the opt-in. And then the second part is the supplier um, reports this, each month you need to report the sales through to Procurement Australia um, and we invoice you back for that Procurement Australia rebate. So a couple of hints that I wanted to point out as part of this process is, please answer each question of the process. Um, we, 
we look to evaluate and score each question that we ask. And <coughs> excuse me, if you don't answer a question, uh, we can't obviously give you a score and it's to your detriment when, you, when you're being compared to other suppliers as part of the process. So please answer each question to allow you to allow us to evaluate the, that submission. Uh, please do not state refer to attachment. Um, it's very difficult sometimes um, to find the information uh, where you've stated this information can be referred, can be found at this attachment. Um, please have tried to avoid that if you can. Please make specific reference or, or write in at that location um, the information you'd like to provide. Again, it allows a, a better apples for apples comparison um, with other suppliers as part of the process. Um, please clearly articulate responses and demonstrate your experience. We're really looking, and especially in this particular tender, we're really looking forward to understanding capability and capacity within uh, the supplier base. Um, please use charts and any numbers where they're suitable, or suitable to help uh, with to help illustrate your point. Um, and please do not use abbreviations. Um, I would like to think that I'm an expert in the library um, field, but I'm not. Um, so if you can please not use abbreviations or please use the full wording and then provide the abbreviation after that. So what's next? Um, the draft specifications that I'm working on are available for review now. Uh, and we're welcoming any feedback until the 20th of November. So after this process, um, I can, uh, if you can send me an email, if you'd like to see the specification and help with provide feedback on that, um, I'll get that out to you straight away. Uh, we need feedback on that document by 20 November. Um, the RFT will be available for download from the 25th of November. Um, those that have registered with Tenderlink will uh, receive an email notification on that day that the tender is live, uh, but always go and check it as well, just in case. Um, Tenderlink, um, the Tenderlink site with, for Procurement Australia is listed there in the document and you'll need to register prior to downloading the, the RFT of course. Um, the Tender Manager contact details, that's me um, in the, the details down there. If you have any questions you'd like to ask about the tender process or um, the specification, you're more than welcome before it's let. After that, um, please use your discretion as to, to how you contact me. I'm more than well, well, willing to talk to uh, anybody and answer any questions. Um, but if the if the questions that we have are formal and will be uh, will either affect the tender process or your submission, they really should be submitted in writing via the tender link process. So I get to the end of the process and ask whether or not we've got any questions at this time. So I'll just do that so that I can see anybody's um, face that jumps up. <coughs> 